Hey, you guys, real quick before we get into this video, I am speaking on black men because I am a black man and I am speaking on the collective of black men. So as we say in the South, if it don't apply, let it fly. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this video. Don't forget to check out the full version of my thoughts on this situation on my podcast. Let me relax. You are tuned into Let Me Relax. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to episode 11 of Let Me Relax. Why won't I or why I won't push for black love? So I want to make it very clear, I'm not against black love. I'm just letting you know why I won't push for it anymore. I'm not going to force that down black women's throats. And the reason why I said black women's throats, well, you'll understand by the end of this video why I said them specifically. Um, so with that being said, first off, I hope y'all are doing all right today. Before we get into this deep dive, I'm doing all right. Thank you for asking. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's, let's listen objectively instead of being in our feelings and ready to, you know, jump. So, um, cause you will get jumped back, <laughs> but no, for real, let me relax. See, that's why we call this podcast that. So with that being said, now, um, to begin, our community is obviously broken on both ends. Um, and we could play tit for tat on what the black men do and what black women do. I don't care to do all that stuff, but uh, because we know the problems. The problem isn't that we don't know the problems. One side doesn't know and the other one doesn't. The problem is we all have a problem as a whole with accountability. And I'm speaking within the sense of black Americans because that's all I can talk about. You know what I'm saying? That's where I live. I live in America. We have a problem with accountability and we like to be intellectually dishonest and kind of curve things for our narrative when it comes to certain black issues, i.e. colorism, i.e. featureism, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, moving in after that, that's my main, you know what I'm saying, like thesis or whatever. Um, Y'all know grammar is not my strong suit, <laughs> but I guess that would be my thesis. So with that being said, the right of die mentality is tired and it gets black women nowhere. And when I say ride or die, I don't mind, you got my back, I got your back. There's no denial on it. Whether that's a friendship, a relationship, I like to have relationships like that around me at all times, especially within friendships. But a lot of what we consider to be ride or die mentality is one-sided loyalty within our community. And we also love to promote struggle love. And even on celebrities, off celebrities, you'll see on Facebook, um, I wish I had my phone, I could look up a post right now, but you'll see a post like, um, oh, if your girl don't, you know what I'm saying, ride to, ride, ride it out with you on an air mattress, she don't deserve to sit with you in a um, Maserati. You'll see some bullshit like that, and you'll see black men say it, and you will also see black women say it and brag that they are the ride or die within the struggle of. And we really believe this shit to be true. You know what I'm saying? And I know people like to say, oh, that's just people online. But here's the thing. Black people are some of the most loudest people online. So you can't tell me that not only does this person feel this way, but let's look at how many likes they got on this post. It, a post like that will get 23K likes. So you cannot tell me. In fact, you know what? Give me a second. I'm going to go find my phone. I'm going to go on my phone. I'm going to find a struggle love post just for this. All right, you guys. So I'm back. The post that I found is a meme, and it says, I got another woman pregnant. If you want to leave, go ahead. The lady responds, no, I won't leave you. I will help you raise the child. And at the top, the person who made the meme said, like a real woman supposed to. So you see how fucked up we are <laughs> as a people, but not only that, as far as the struggle of shit goes. And let me make it clear that society sets women up to and patriarchy sets women up to go through or not go through necessarily but be ready to endure more way more than a man that a way, way more of what a man may or may not put them through throughout a relationship marriage or whatever than um the other way around would be you know what i'm saying like look what happened when cardi b and offset broke up 
if men wasn't hollering at her, because there was some who were, but if they wasn't hollering at her, they was, oh, you need to get back together with her. You see how all the black celebrities rallied around Offset like that? You know what I'm saying? So we, we've normalized this. We've normalized it. It's, and it's, perverse. it's a perverse way of thinking. Nonetheless, going on into my next bulletin point. Now let's get into the black celeb black love couples. All the black love couples that we, you know what I'm saying, the first ones that come to mind. Excuse me. When we speak about black love within the celebrity realm. All right. So first up is Beyonce and Jay-Z. One of the most prevalent black power couple in the world. You know what I'm saying? Not even just in American standards, but I think just worldwide, they've surpassed that barrier. Beyonce and Jay-Z were forever couple goals up until Beyonce dropped Lemonade back in 2016. And she let it be known that Jay-Z had stepped out on her a couple times in their relationship. How many times? I don't know. But it was at least once. I'm assuming it's more than once if it had to be enough to write that whole album. Because um, it seemed like... I know that was a, also a autobiography or a biography for black women, personally, and black women existing in America, specifically. But um, let's just assume it was more than one time. Um, I don't know if Solange would have given them hands for just that one time of cheating. So at any rate, <laughs> let's assume it was multiple times. Um, we don't know. We're not in their bedroom. We don't know. But Beyonce and Jay-Z, perfect example. We put them on a pedestal all these years. Come to find out he has stepped out on her. And not even just the cheating. That's an issue for me. Um... It's always been a little murky when Beyonce and Jay-Z met. How old was Beyonce? Was she legal, of legal age? And then also it doesn't help that Dame Dash admitted that one point he and Jay-Z, if I'm not mistaken, let me say allegedly because I don't know for sure, um, but if I heard the audio correctly, um, he said that him and Jay-Z were allegedly bowing for attention um, with Aaliyah so they were in essence fighting over Aaliyah at one point and I don't think she was legal when this was happening that's all I'm going to say on that so that part has always been murky um, and I said that because you know what I'm saying the fact that he got with Beyonce when he, she was so much younger the age gap to me is not a difference I think the um, only time I think an age gap is inappropriate is well personally my thing is, maturity-wise, are the people on the same wavelength, you know what I'm saying? Especially with a big age gap like Beyonce and Jay-Z's, they're literally like 12 years apart, if I'm not mistaken. So, are y'all on the same level maturity-wise? And then also, when did y'all meet when this age gap happened? Because if it's like some 18 to 26-year-old shit, I don't care how much you think you in love, girl or boy, uh-uh, uh-uh. Now, I, with my dating history, that's a bit hypocritical, but we're not going to really talk about that. Let me relax. So at any rate, <clears throat> next couple, Remy Ma and Papoose. Um, now, first off, I, same thing with Jay-Z and Beyonce. I love me some Remy Papoose. I really do. I think their story is like a black unicorn, and that's the problem. It's a black unicorn. You do not find many men like Papoose who would stay with a woman, a black woman, a black man that would stay with a black woman that was incarcerated. Like I brought up earlier, the patriarchal, uh, not stereotypes, but double standards. Like a lot of y'all niggas would bounce. You know what I'm saying? But even with the fact that he stayed and she was able to come back out and bounce back, you know, bigger than ever. You know, she was on Empire. The Nicki Minaj diss aside, she was on Empire. She was doing, you know what I'm saying, feature here, feature there, on TV shows, on The Real. You know what I'm saying? Even before she threw in all that. You know what I'm saying? She was doing her thing. And we're going to give props for that. We're going to keep that all the way real. Hey, like, I'm serious. When she first got out, y'all, I was there for it all. Her Truffle Butter remix, her only remix. That they don't love you no more. Oh, my God. When y'all was on the TV, I was with the PVs. I listened to your CD. Damn, you really want to be me. Don't care if your name buzz it. You know who the queen be. Della was real digital lace. It bitches still can't be me. These rap chicks try to stay away from me. Maybe because I caught that case, they afraid of me. Rim got that phlegm and spit it. Crazy, crazy. Ooh. Okay, let me relax. Too much. But as I said, <laughs> um, if y'all ain't heard her, they don't love you no more remix. Y'all need to go look that up. But at any rate, straight bars. Um, 
Like I said, though, when it comes to Remy and Pat Poos, even though they had the best outcome possible, you know what I'm saying? Her coming out still on coming out on top. You know what I'm saying? Them being fine financially. It's still struggle love. It's just rich struggle love. That's really it. You know what I'm saying? They were financially secure, but struggle love is not just attuned to how much money you have. If you're rich and in a marriage and your nigga or your girl is still out there cheating on you left and right, that is still struggle love. Money does not change that factor. So with that being said, moving on to the third couple that I picked, Gabrielle and D-Wade. Now, I know in light of recent stuff, y'all little boosted fans and y'all, you know what I'm saying, homophobic parts of the community, they ain't really fucking with, you know, Gabrielle Union and D-Wade. However, they're black love. And prior to all the transgender talk and all that, y'all would big them up a lot. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, um, as far as black love goes, go. So with that being said, let's get into their situation. So for those who don't know, it has been alleged for the longest time that Gabrielle Union was actually the other woman. Um, I believe Dwayne Wade was with his wife. I cannot remember her name. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I cannot remember her name, but she was with his wife. Or no, he was with his wife when they met. And um, even as far as... Well, you, that's a personal issue. We're just here to talk about the black love. I'm not going to get into the relationship with Gabrielle and the um, ex-wife, but it's not pretty. Um, the ex-wife is under a couple of NDAs, if I'm not mistaken. So she can't even, you know, with certain things that are going on with, you know, the Zaya situation, she can't speak out about that. But nonetheless, that's a whole, we're talking about the black love aspect. Excuse me. And as I just let y'all know, allegedly, Gabrielle was the other woman. Therefore, you have a relationship born out of infidelity, i.e. struggle love. So with that being said, um, those are a couple of examples of celebrities, black love couples that we uplift. But you know what I'm saying? They have their own dirty laundry, too. Um, so with that being said, I want to move on to the next point. Um, a lot of black men, pro-black men are just that in fact let me clarify they are pro-black straight men only and light-skinned women slash mixed women i.e how you had this doja cat problem happen and i did see don't get me wrong i'm not saying black men are the only reason why doja cat is famous that would be arrogant to say that because if i'm saying they're black male identified then there's no way a female rap artist is going to be her main fan base is going to be straight black men you know what i'm saying so with that being said i understand that black women have done their fair share as well because we as a whole community wise we uplift and put light-skinned women and mixed women on a pedestal i.e cardi b doja cat now that's not to say i don't like some of these women's music but at the end of the day the truth is the truth it is what it is we put them on a pedestal. And to circle back around with the Doja Cat conversation, I brought that up because, as I said, a lot of pro-black men are straight black male identified. That's all they care about. That's the only thing they're pro-black with. And with that being said, with or and or light-skinned women, mixed women. It's funny how just a couple days ago when she was going at Lana Del Rey, she was black. She was black. Black men and women were referring to her as black, which is why I tell y'all this one drop rule is bullshit and we need to do away with it. But when people say that, when black people say you don't need to count mixed people in with us because you will further on elevate them and they will take spots away from us, then it's, oh, you're being divisive. Oh, da, 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 all this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You cannot bring emotions to logical debates and conversations. You can't. That doesn't work. This is not about how you feel. It is the truth. Logically speaking, if somebody has two parents of two different races, they are mixed. But with black men, and don't let them fool you, they know, this is the thing, even white people to a certain degree know colorism. And I know that's going to shock some people to hear that, but they do. They know what a quote unquote safe black person is and a not safe black person. They know the difference between light skin and dark skin. You know what I'm saying? And they've been inherently taught to treat one differently than the other one. But with that being said, black men also know colorism and they know what erasure looks like. 
They know what a racial looks like. They'll sit there and tell black women, oh no, you, you mixed women are black too. they all lives matter, that shit. But when it comes to a mixed man like the Dwayne DeRock Johnson playing Henry Ford, you see, I don't think I remember that, huh? Henry Ford, who has historically been depicted as a dark-skinned black man, when it's time for The Rock to take up a role that has been historically depicted by dark-skinned men, then all of a sudden, oh no, this is colorism, it's erasure. You know what the words mean, you know what I'm saying? But when black women are talking about their struggles with erasure and colorism, it's gaslighting all day long. Or it's, oh, you're just ugly. That's all that it is. And for any man that wants to lie about that, let's refer back to Nipsey Hussle's funeral and YG's oh so wise comments about their light-skinned daughters that they were going to have trouble with. Hey, you guys, if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast, please check me out on Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening.